Dennis Gartman, editor and publisher of the Gartman Letter, joins us now. What's your position right now, Dennis? Quietly, modestly, not overtly, pleasantly long. And, and I, I, I predicate that upon the fact that I'd been short since uh, late June, early July. Crude oil had been coming down for quite a period of time, as far as I was concerned. The contango had been widening, which told me one needed to be bearish. But yesterday, yesterday, the, the, the contango, the term structure, shifted rather dramatically. That's always interesting to me. And as importantly, you had a technical circumstance where you made a new low for the move, closed higher on the day, an outside reversal. Those sorts of things are enough to, to, to allow me, for the first time in a while, not to be bearish or crude, but to take a punt on the long side. Am I overtly ecstatic about it? No. A am I uh, uh, largely involved? No. Will I become more largely involved if the market tells me that I'm right? And for the last four hours, it's actually told me, Dennis, not so smart. It moved 50 cents against me. It sounds like a very technical reason as to why you, you went yeah. Moderately, pleasantly, whatever you want to call it, long. <laughs> uh, so, uh, does it need to have a funda fundamental catalyst for you to keep that long on, or for you to get more constructive, or can it move higher completely on technicals? Well, I, I think over the course of the last several months, crude oil has moved predominantly on technicals alone. It's really not moved that dramatically on fundamental concerns. The only major fundamental that has been bearish has I'm been sorry, since I'm about just two interrupt. weeks ago. I'm sure our audience can hear that we're in the midst of a fire alarm here at the Nasdaq. For some reason, it's a it's an event that continues to happen and yeah, it's like the second uh, time in the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, increasing frequency, but <laughs> that's the Could those are the caution. loud voices. They're not in your head. They're actually here at the Nasdaq <laughs> announcing the fire alarm. I, I, I'm Dennis. Sorry, go ahead. You said that for many months it's been moving purely on a technical uh, basis. Yeah, I, I, it had been, but. What was bothering me all along and why I had a, a marked propensity to be bearish of crude was the fact that the term structure was telling me that. The front months were consistently losing relative to the back months. I pay dramatic attention, very real attention, to what the term structure, what the contango tells me. Suddenly yesterday, the contango turned the other way. That's what I call informed money making a, a, a material change. And when I saw both the contango narrow and the market reversed to the upside, an outside reversal as we call it, that was enough to change my, my opinion on crude. Am I, as I said, am I ecstatic about it? Am I overtly involved? No. If the market tells me I'm right, I shall become greater, uh, more so. Hey, Dennis, your note is widely read, and, and I read some of it this morning, too, and I saw it. I think you framed your argument, though, and your caution was that you were saying you, you were still somewhat bearish of crude. Um, and part yeah. of that, and I think it, it, somewhere towards the end, you, you highlight that, look, on supply side, you're still not comfortable. In fact, I think you said we're more or less where we were um, or things haven't really changed that much. When, in fact, um, I, I see U.S. production down to almost a million barrels year over year. I see that coming in even more, despite some of the, uh, the, the choppiness in, in the rig count. So, so can you reconcile that? Because that's a little confusing. Well, the rig counts have been down for, uh, what, two and a half, almost two years now, and they've actually, it, it appears that rig counts are starting to bottom out. The only reason rig counts are bottoming out is because you've had a large, a very wide contango, and you got up to $51, $52 in nearby WTI, which gave you about $56 in one year forward. That was more than sufficient for people to bring on new rigs for uh, frackers especially, and especially in the Permian Basin, to become more aggressive. The one problem that I have with even turning marginally bullish of crude oil, however, is the fact that the Saudis, with this new program that they put forward, uh, the, this program 2030, I think it's abundantly clear that the Saudis are going to sell as much crude oil as they possibly can all the time, as quickly as they are able to do it, because I think they realize that in 40 years, crude oil becomes an absolutely unimportant, uh, zero-cost uh, fuel. We will have replaced it with something else. That in the back of my mind shall always be there and it will always make me uh, antsy about mm -hmm. being bullish at any time. But for right now, you've had a technical circumstance that, that, that told me, let's, get, let's not be short, let's try the long side for a while. Can I be wrong? Tim, I've been wrong a lot. The important thing in the business of, of trading is if you're wrong, admit it quickly, get to the sidelines, go find something else to do.